was since establishing diplomatic relations on 10th of February 1971, Nigeria's relationship with China has developed into one of the most important bilateral relationships maintained by either country. Apart from the exchange of high-level visits, Chinese companies and money have found their way into Nigeria, Africa's largest economy. They are involved in a variety of major projects in Nigeria. Put differently, trade relations between Africa and Asia, especially China, has increased the prosperity of African nations. However, overcoming Africa's debt challenges will not only benefit the continent but profit its partners in Asia and the world economy as a whole. We will focus on Africa, Asia and trade and investment on the show today. Welcome to Business Insights on PLUS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Well, welcome back. Let's start with stories which made headline in Nigeria's business space for this week. Incidentally, the 2021 finance bill, a petrol subsidy among others, held sway. Take a look. So after this, we come and... A finance bill is a legislative bill proposing changes to taxes, levies and duties in a fiscal year. The virtual emergency neck meeting was presided over by Vice President Yemio Sibandro on Tuesday. In a statement after the meeting, Lao Luo Akonde, Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President and Media, said the bill was presented to the Council by Zainab Ahmed, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The federal government has hinted that its subsidy on electricity tariff is about 1.0 trillion naira between 2019 and 2021. The amount represents a gap between the cost-reflective tariff and a liable tariff which pegged at 28 naira per unit of electricity supplied to consumers. This, according to the government, was largely responsible for liquidity crunch in the power sector as well as the poor power supply in the country. Consequently, it has closed its plans to realign its policies, regulations and activities of power sector operators as a means of improving electricity supply. As part of efforts to support Nigeria's mines and steel development sector, the office of the past ruler of the Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, His Royal Highness, Hadam bin Khalifa, has pledged a sum of $2 billion to Nigeria. The donations were to further cement the close trade and bilateral relationship that exists between the two countries. The Minister of State Mines and Steel Development, Mr. Uche Chuku Oga, made the disclosure when he delivered a special address at the Dubai World Expo 2021 with the theme, Investment in Nigerian Gold Sector, Opportunities in Gold Value Chain. It held in Abu Dhabi. On Thursday, the Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPENG, suspended its planned nationwide strike. This was confirmed in a statement signed and released by NUPENG's President, William Sakboreha, and General Secretary, Mr. Afolabi Olawale in Lagos. The statement said the strike was suspended following the intervention and engagement with government agencies and institutions, including the NNPC. Diaspora remittances into Nigeria increased by 15.6% quarter-on-quarter to $9.22 billion in the first quarter of 2021, compared to $7.98 billion recorded in the second half of 2022. It also represents a marginal 2.2% increase compared to a $9.02 billion recorded in the corresponding period of 2022. This is according to the review of the Nigerians' balance of payment account as released by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. The increase follows the continuation of the Nigeria for Dollar in Initiative by the Apex Bank, which rewards recipients with five naira for every one dollar they receive from licensed IMTOs and commercial banks. Recall that the Central Bank of Nigeria extended this initiative indefinitely earlier in May 2021 with a view to increase remittances so as to boost external reserves. <laughs> And those were the stories that made business headlines for this week. 
Now, Prince Alawali Sulaiman Ayla is the president of the Asia-Africa Chamber of Commerce, and he joins us now to look at how these relations can be fostered. Well, many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk about, uh, you know, this uh, relationship that Nigeria specifically has had with Asian countries. Let's start with um, China. For over the years, uh, the presence of um, Chinese uh, goods, services, you know, have made so much tremendous impact on the country. You know, so how would you say uh, this relationship uh, has been? Is it a win-win situation for both countries or is it just uh, one having an edge over the other? Mm, honestly, if I must speak from my own uh, point of view, and uh, why I have been opportune to sit on this position as the president of uh, Africa, uh, Asia Africa Chamber of Commerce, African continent, is because of the deep understanding of international trade between Nigeria and Malaysia, especially to start with, then we go to the other China. part of okay. Uh, Asia. Asia, because I must uh, uh, make it clear that uh, AACC, Asia African Chamber of Commerce, is an organization registered under the Interior Ministry of Malaysian Government, uh, Internal Affairs Ministry. Uh, though it is an inclusive organization for all part of Asia to participate in uh, participate in facilitating bilateral trade and investment development with Ni with Nigeria here. So I will answer to you on what effect have I seen and what China has been doing. Yes, it is uh, a win-win in a way, but we would rather prefer that whatever Asians are doing with Africans should just not have the aspect of trade benefits alone. No, it should have a very, very positive impact on the social life of the people here. So this is where we come in. We don't want to trade, just come in and trade with Africa. Uh, China is signing deals with Nigerian government. We know they are doing things. And most of the things Nigerian governments are signing with China too, they consider the interest of the people before they sign such deals with China. But then, if the government is thinking of the people, they are thinking of the people as an entity, general, the nation. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? But for us to think of the people is we are thinking of the ordinary people. That how is all this trade impacting on the ordinary people? So this is where uh, we come in as AACC. One that we want to we want to create a situation where trade relation between Asia and Nigeria and other parts of Africa is not just a government to government thing. But on the other hand, it should be something that should impact the lives of ordinary people of that environment. Okay, let me put in there. Why is it it shouldn't just be a part of um, government um, to government thing? You know, specifically, uh, the Asia-Africa uh, you know, Chamber of Commerce, uh, aside from dealing uh, with uh, maybe governmental organizations, do you yes. deal with um, you know, the private sector? Definitely, we'll be working with the private sector in most cases here in Africa. That's why I say, you see, when you see most of China's uh, uh, relation with Nigeria, especially, it is mostly a G2G thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is facilitated, facilitated through a G2G thing. Mm -hmm. But what are we thinking of the SMEs in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. This is where we come in. We want the SMEs in Nigeria to, to benefit from international relation and trade. So how do we let that happen? It means uh, uh, we, have to, we have to have a clear understanding of the situation on ground here, especially in Nigeria, that, okay, China is signing a trade agreement with Nigeria, uh, a bilateral trade agreement with Nigeria to support Nigerian uh, infrastructure system. Or whatever. Yes, it does create job at the end of the day for the people. It does improve on our social life. But we want something more okay. than that in our trade relationship with Asian countries. And that those things that we want more than that are the target of Asia African uh, Chamber right. of Commerce right. to implement and let it show positive impact All right. in Africa here. 
you will agree with me that um, um, Africa, uh, specifically in Nigeria and uh, you know neighboring countries, have actually you know benefited from uh, this uh, you know facilitation and the uh, trade uh, from Asia. But then again, there's this notion you know, around uh, Nigeria that uh, you know most goods uh, uh, brought in from Asian countries are uh, you know uh, usually of substandard uh, you know quality. You know, so how do you ensure that uh, you know Nigerians are protected? Uh, the consumers that is uh, in 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 the sense of uh, having a value for money, so that um, Africa will not just be a dumping ground for you know goods and services you know uh, exported from uh, or Asia. imported you know into the, the continent. From Asia. Thank yes. you very much. That's a very crucial area you are touching now, because this are another area where Asia. African Chamber of Commerce is part of the reasons we came up with this uh, 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 a new concept of trade between Asia and Nigeria. If you see on, on our own programs that we are looking to implement from next year, to because we are creating a new dimension to international trade with Nigeria. So, and uh, we are going to be collaborating with a lot of Asian manufacturers. And uh, we don't, we are not just uh, working on the basis of you have a product to sell to Nigeria, you have to bring it. No, there's is, there, there is a number of factors that has been put on ground to consider for any product that will be coming into Nigeria, for example, that uh, uh, um, uh, how, how, how needful is this product to our society here, number one then uh, how beneficial is this product to our society, number two. Then what is the quality of this product, number three. So, so we have uh, created something we, we, we call for now AVM. AVM is going to be an industrial hub in Nigeria precisely that we are looking into establishing on uh, about a thousand hectares of land. And uh, this is where the actual trading benefits between Nigeria and Asia will come up because uh, the concept there is that, okay, we have said that uh, if you want to partner with us on this program, I'm sorry, if you want to partner with us on this program now for, for uh, 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 entering into Africa market or Nigeria market, we have our own requirements too these days. The, okay, the first thing is that we have to see your product, we have to check the quality control. The next, we have a place we have set up that all products coming in are not finished products. We don't want finished products in Nigeria because when you bring in finished products, how are they going to benefit from that? You just no value addition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so we have set up a criteria whereby, okay, if you are making any product, you can, I mean, start production up to 40 or 50 percent maximum 60 percent over there in your place. Mm -hmm. But the remaining 40 percent, let it come down here. That's the essence of the industrial hub. The industrial hub is creating a space for our women and our youths to gain skill in the production line of this product mm. so that in future such skill can be transferred to them and now it could be our own uh, 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 for that development. So to be some sort of um, um, uh, verticals of integration, you know, where uh, you know Asian countries or Asian companies are at different levels of production can actually come, and the final product will be done here in Nigeria. Yes, exactly. This is the concept we are working on. So in that way, we'll be able to. It is not just that you produce what we don't know about. You we, you have to educate our youth on okay. how to produce this thing. So in future, we are not encouraging you to manufacture and bring. We're encouraging you to be part of our a transformation program, social economic transformation program. So you come down here, produce here. When you produce here and we market, and it's not just produce, excuse me, I forgot to tell you something, it is a bilateral thing. If, for example, you are producing uh, orange juice, for example, you do need oranges to produce orange juice. Mm -hmm. I'm just using that as an example. So why do you have to bring oranges from Asia to us? When you can actually Africa, do a cultivation. When we have abundant, very a fertile lands. land in, in Nigeria here. Okay. So we would rather say, no, you grow your oranges here. If you want to manufacture your, if you want to produce your juice there, we don't mind, but you grow your oranges here, you export your orange from here, yeah. you produce your juice, and we bring it back into our industrial hub. Okay. And not finished even, it should come back maybe in liquid, uh, in, uh, 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 liquid tanks and yeah. uh, 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 flexi tanks, and the bottling comes back to be done here. Okay. So that way, 
it's a win-win thing for both sides. It okay. is just not one so side. So invariably, at the end of the day, we're not just uh, being over-dependent on what uh, they just uh, produce and sort of dump to us. Uh, That's we right. actually are a part of the production chain and though we add value at different points in that, time. That, that's right, because in my own opinion and my own uh, 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 reasoning, I have lived in, say, about six, seven countries around the world. And uh, it is a fact that uh, if I taste you in this country, it is made with the same chili, tomato, and onions that is made here. But something, I never get the same taste mm. from them. And it is the same tomato the same chili mm. so why am i not getting the same taste it means uh, i mean the fatality of the soil or however it is grown or the species itself is species it. even is the same species but you still mm -hmm. don't get the same taste all right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. so sometimes when i come back to nigeria and i stay one month i i i get fat then when i get back people say we thought they said nigeria is not good people will say if you go i said no me, when I go to Nigeria, I get fatter. They say, why? I said, because that is the only place in the world where I eat what is authentic. Mm. I mean, when you talk organic, it's organic. Mm -hmm. So, so, and I see this huge potential. In us. So I said, listen, why must you use your orange juice that I'm not enjoying the taste of the orange to make me orange juice? Why don't you come and take our own orange juice here and make orange juice? Mm -hmm. So if you are selling back the orange juice to Nigeria, they will enjoy it. Because they know the taste, they feel it, mm. rather than using your own. And at the same time, you are giving opportunity to them to be part right. of your trade. Okay, let's so move this on. is what we are looking into. Okay, let's move on right now. Yeah. I have our two other angles to look at, uh, you know, on this particular discourse. Uh, first off is uh, Nigerians have a bit of concern, you know, aside from the fact that uh, they have um, their sentiments, you know, either biased or unbiased uh, concerning, uh, you know, the durability and of course uh, the quality of uh, product and services you know coming from Asia they also have this notion that uh, you know Asia or some Asian countries uh, just want to sort of uh, uh, marginalize uh, you know Africa uh, you know with their huge investment and uh, their their loans you know financial involvement in some project here in Africa so how do we uh, you know draw the line to ensure that uh, you know in as much as we are getting uh, some sort of viable partnership with Asian countries, uh, we are also being protected to ensure that uh, at the end of the day, we're not uh, losing our souls, as it were, to the Asian country. Because uh, a question uh, comes to mind, or a scenario comes to mind with that of Uganda, with some, uh, you know, some <laughs> agreement they signed. The yes, and now they are international. <laughs> the only international airport is about being taken away, That's you know, right. by the Chinese uh, company. That's right. Um, uh, uh, you see, in that hangul. The scope is wide, because why I'm saying this is that, okay, it depends on uh, the procedure of engagement between okay. the two sides mm. in the process of engagement. But as far as AACC is concerned, and uh, we are on ground, all projects coming to us have a standard operating procedure already. Mm -hmm. on, uh, yes, uh, this is the way we want to do it. And uh, we do not have, because, okay, I'm a, I'm a Nigerian, for example. Mm -hmm. And I'm a president of uh, AACC Africa. I mean, whatever I'm dealing, I will not do anything that will marginalize my people on my own ground. Okay. Uh, because in, the, in, in one way, I'm the face of my people, too. True. And that is why I'm put on board. Because, okay, this is your country, uh, this is your continent, you understand, you have an understanding of trade there, and you have been uh, in Asia for decades too with proper understanding of bilateral trade development. So how do we go about this? And uh, I, I did a number of presentations on this, which is it, it is quite agreeable that I, I, I want a very balanced, mm. you know, win-win situation. I don't, I, don't, I don't want my people to lose their dignity or to lose their future just because someone is dangling a carrot at them. So we are here to observe and watch that whatever transaction we are going into does have a balancing ground. Mm. Because in Asia itself, where we come from, you see, it is hard for you, for example, I was talking to a friend in Malaysia and Sarawak uh, two days ago who has a very vast land. And I was just jokingly with him that I want some part of your land and something that I might be doing something there. He said, no problem, you can do anything on the land, but you can never own the land. 
I said, why? He said, it's my land. I said, what do you mean it's your land? He said, because in my country, we don't sell land. My government doesn't allow us to sell our land. Mm -hmm. You see? So this is why I say, if we are talking about getting the adequate balance, it's going to be a, a, it's going to be a combination of the efforts of all stakeholders, which is the government itself. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me now? There are some government standing law that applies. Say, okay, look at the Chinese today. A Chinese man might say he comes to Nigeria and he buys a land from a Nigerian and he sold it. Maybe you have a land, he wants to buy it, he buy it. But is it possible in the other side like that? So, so this might not have anything to do with the, with the business people. It might have to do with the government structure okay. in, that, in that country, which we can only advise the government that, but I mean, how do you overturn that system in the country that, okay, foreigners can no more buy land, all this? I mean, that should pass through the legislature. It's another story. Oh. So the area of marginalizing us in trade, I think it will be based on the understanding or the facilitation of the agreement between the two parties. But for AACC, mm. whatever we are doing, the interest of Africans come first in our mind all because right. we are coming down to be part of better transformation, development of bilateral trade and investment. Okay, as we Thank round you. off from this particular discourse, now let's try and understand them, the AACC and of course, uh, you know, uh, what benefits it could be for African uh, nations in terms of scope. You know, is it just uh, an all commerce affair or is it open to all African countries uh, uh, that have, uh, you know, some dealings uh, with Asia? Okay, yeah, we are open to develop bilateral development of trade and investment with all parts of Africa. Okay. But we are starting with Nigeria, Nigeria. Okay. Uh, since Nigeria is our HQ and uh, it is quite obvious Nigeria is a window to Africa. Okay. And uh, 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 we have been on this for many years, developing this and so on. We have done most of the job here in Nigeria. Okay. So we will be starting with most of our project in Nigeria, then we'll be extending it to other African countries. But we are looking into uh, are covering okay. the whole of Africa. But on the final note, right now, you talked you, all so far in this discussion, we're talking about just bilateral agreements. Uh, would, would there be a situation where it could uh, move to multilateral, where more than one uh, or two African country can actually deal with um, the Asians uh, at, the, at the time? De definitely, we are, we are moving, but we just, uh, so, so we don't rush it. You must understand, the problem we had for a very long time in facilitating better development of bilateral trade with Asia is basically trust okay. on the two sides. Mm, true. Yeah, because if the Asians say they don't trust the Nigerians, we always tell them that the Nigerians too are very skeptical careful, of the Asian. Skeptical yeah. of the Asian. Mm. I mean, a Nigerian who is trading and you are telling him to transfer $150,000 to you in China to buy a com uh, some goods to ship to him. I mean, if he thinks of the process it will take him to exchange his Naira into a dollar and just send it to you there, and at the end of the, time, uh, end of the day, it's not sure if something is going to come back. So we are worried as much as that. And if you tell an Asian man, send your goods down here, I will send, he wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So this is where AACC comes in that, okay, we want to create a better channel for this. And we want to, we want to be able to allow both parties to facilitate trades. We are on ground here. Yeah. We are here to assure you that no problem. Whatever you do, we stand as intermediary and we will make sure things go well between the two sides. All right, uh, that's as much as we thank can take you so in on this particular discussion. We must say a very big thank you to you, you know, for explaining some of these gray areas and, of course, uh, some, uh, you know, skepticism uh, Nigerians and indeed Africans have uh, concerning trading uh, with, um, you know, the Asian countries. That's right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. And that's the size of the show for today. We have been speaking with the president of the Asia African Chamber of Commerce, and we have uh, talked about uh, how you know trade and, of course, uh, the social life of Africans can be improved uh, through you know very good relationship. We'll see you again uh, next week. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching.